Hey, welcome back. We are talking with uh, Jim Kennedy, Linda Fleming, uh, healthcare attorneys with now with Carlton Fields. We have a couple of emails we'll get to, but Jim, I want to I want to throw this out at you because in the, in the big press release that Carlton Fields uh, mm -hmm. when making the announcement that they had hired these nine new attorneys, you said it's crucial to look not at just the negatives within healthcare reform. I seek out the positives and ask what will allow hospitals to prosper. There will be opportunities for hospitals and other healthcare providers to work collectively with doctors in ways that will benefit both. What do you mean? That under health care reform, because in part of bundled payment, these accountable care organizations, which you might have heard about, value-based purchasing, if hospitals can collaborate with their physician partners and find ways to deliver care in a more efficient way, the government, through Medicare or Medicaid, will pay them more for the incident of service. So it's not just cost reduction. There are opportunities for the providers to, who do provide great quality, um, to work together and make more money than they would customarily make. On the flip side, if you're not providing great quality, you're going to see a decrease in your payment. So I think that's a real good opportunity. And I think, on a, on a, on a, I think of the perception people outside of this industry have is that health care, the government works against health care providers and has been working against insurance and, is, and that the new health care reform law is going to hurt them. Do you think that's the perception and are we I do. wrong? No, I think that is the perception because you hear so much about all the payment cuts that are coming. And there are going to be payment cuts, but there are also, as you just said, opportunities to drive profit uh, a little bit better because if you can demonstrate that you're providing higher quality than you know, the hospital down the street, you'll get uh, paid more. Likewise, for the consumer, there should be lower cost for them in the long run. Um, they should see insurance premiums decline over time. The health insurance exchanges will be an opportunity for lower income people to access these health care markets that previously now they can only access through emergency rooms. So there are some opportunities. Linda, I'm going to let you have this one from Connie. Okay? Okay. It's an email. In the uh, new health care law, when can people with pre-existing conditions get new insurance? Well, if for kids, the Health Care Reform Act has already gone into effect. So for children, which is basically anyone 18 and under, you can't be excluded from a group plan based on pre-existing conditions. For adults, you won't see that reform until 2014. And you were both telling me that 2014, getting to 2014, that's when everything should well be in place yes right yes. that's the sea change year that's when consumers will be required to have health insurance that is if things don't change correct <laughs> before <laughs> then and which we always can uh we got it we got it up from uh, from gerald in auburndale i own a home if my medical bills get out of hand can it be taken from me anybody want to mm -hmm. take that in florida no um, your home is exempt from, from creditors generally. Um, maybe not your mortgage company, but other creditors. Um, a, a hospital lien or physician lien can be placed on it so that when you sell the home, part of those proceeds could go to pay your bill, but the home itself is protected. Okay. For the average person sitting at home, the person watching the show, probably not in the health care industry, what do you say to those people who are watching this change happen in the healthcare business? Well, first, wait and see. We'll see what actually happens. But if the government's plan works, then you should be able to get reasonably priced health care insurance. And so it should lead to all of us having a healthier lifestyle. One thing which the new law provides is payment to primary care physicians for preventive care, for going and just have a wellness checkup. Right now, you know, so much of our payment system for, for the hospital industry and physician industry is based on being sick and having something happen to you. Yeah. Now, under health care reform, there will be payment opportunities for people just to go visit their doctor and say, you know, give me a check. See, you know, I'm just not feeling great. Um, and that will be paid for by most of the health insurance companies. I joked with you all when we were when we were walking down the hall about this aspect of, of the of the attorney business being in, in the in the healthcare uh, being healthcare lawyers, and it's, it seems to me that it's a growth industry. Do you do you think other law firms will be do, following Carl, Carlton Peel's suit and, and getting more healthcare attorneys? I think so. I mean, it's such a big industry, Russell, um, and it's so highly regulated. 
And as Linda was saying, I mean, it touches upon all of us as patients and consumers. It touches upon some of the largest employers. Hospitals in most communities tend to be one of the largest employers. School systems can work with hospitals to join these accountable care organizations and try to enroll all their um, employees into that system. So I think you'll see a lot of law firms and consulting firms trying to move into this, this market to try to um, help facilitate all the new rules that you'll see. And a kid going to law school, not a bad branch of... Uh... I think it's an excellent choice of law. Okay. There will be a need for more health care lawyers as we get further in the process. All right. Good advice today. Thank you both very Thank much. You. Thanks very to much. Jim Kennedy and to Linda Fleming from Carlton Fields. Thanks to all of you for sharing your opinions with some great emails.